Joining me now, very pleased to have with us, I said, you know, when we get this kind of action, I want to talk to David Morgan from Silver Investor, and you find him at silver in, silver-investor.com. Uh, David, first of all, appreciate you finding time this weekend because, as I say, it's been a lot of action out there, and, and if you'd allow me, I'll start with the silver market there. Kind of breaking through that September low, I think it was 2904 off the top of my head. Now we break through to another level. What do you make of the silver action? Well, so I'm let you just outline in gold. I mean, we're basically at a level here we sure, certainly want to hold. Uh, you can take an intermediate term uh, uptrend line, and you're touching all the bottoms right here, right now. So obviously, you like to hold there. Uh, I like to use horizontal lines for various reasons. I don't have time to go into it, but it's been proven factually that they're more pow- powerful than the uptrend lines. Not that an uptrend line isn't important. It is. Uh, but so I'm looking at what we've seen in the past. Silver's notoriously uh, puts in what I call these spike lows. In fact, I wrote an article in Futures Magazine that they featured years ago. It was a metals uh, Futures Magazine did a thing on metals. They chose me to write an article on how I trade, and I talked about spike lows in the silver market. The spike lows, Michael, as you know, have been around the twenty-six dollar level, and each time they have rebounded very, very sharply from that level. So that's the worst case I could see. Uh, I don't think we're going to get there, quite honestly. I don't think we'll get below 28. But I also said I thought 30-ish would hold. It hasn't. So, uh, you know, I'm like anyone else. Anyone that does technical work works with the realm of probability. And there's no certainty in this market. And I certainly think that I've been very straight up about that. But my calls have been, I'd say, as good as anyone else's. But to know exactly when and where, pretty tough call. I'm fairly calm here. I also have an opportunity, I think, that's uh, so outstanding because regardless of where the market is, because of wherever it is right here, right now, this thing is such high grade that uh, it could, it could uh, avert a lot of pain that a lot of people are feeling. And we're going to be featuring this company in the next issue of the Morgan Report. Well, and, and that, that brings, I want to come to the stock side of things. Uh, you know, clearly the stocks, uh, well, actually the silver stocks, I think, look a little better than the gold stocks, but still there has been that, dis, uh, you know, that, that, that sell-off, a stronger sell-off, and I'm not talking about just this past week. I mean, over the last uh, whatever time frame we want to put on it, two, you know, year and a half, whatever it is, but we've seen the stock side of things sell off even more, and to me that's the biggest reason why you want to stay in quality uh, is to kind of weather these kind of storms. What what do you make of that sort of disconnect between the price of whether it's gold bullion, silver bullion, which you follow, of course, both in the, in the uh, Morgan report uh, and stocks themselves? Well, there has, (coughs) excuse me, Mike, there has been a a great disconnect. I mean, normally what you get is a leverage of about three to one. And so, and it works both directions. In other words, if you get a, 5% 5% down in gold, you'll get about a 15% down in the mining shares. Well, just looking over the year so far, we're only a couple months in there. Gold is off 5% for 2013, but the HUI is off 19%. So we're off almost a factor of four. And this has been something that's been going on for quite some time now, I mean, the last few years. And the trade has been among the, oh, more powerful, let's say, the hedge fund types. That has been to be, for example, long, gold, and short, the XAU. And this trade has worked out well for them. I, well, you know, a fact is a fact. Nonetheless, it, it, the, the rubber band can only be stretched so far. The other thing that we haven't touched on I want to make mention of is, is the, other, the other white metals, platinum and palladium. I made a little strong comment. Maybe I didn't pound the table strong enough in the January issue of the Morgan Report right at the close about watching palladium and platinum, particularly to lead the next leg up. And they are up. For example, palladium's up about 5% for the year, while gold's off 5% for the year. Platinum's up 4.4% for the year, and silver's off 5% for the year. Um, the shares haven't reflected that necessarily. And this company that I'm talking about uh, has got some significant platinum grades. Just to give you a quick example now, here's the intercept. It's only 2 meters, but people that know anything about mining know 2 meters is, you know, that's like six feet wide. It's not like it's just a foot wide, but it's 200, 200 grams per ton platinum. Uh, this is basically a gold, platinum, palladium project, and it's in a mining-friendly area, and I don't know any other newsletter writer that has this thing. This thing, to me, is something that, <clears throat> you know, I, I hate to be too hypey, but I'm excited and I want people to make money. 
I mean, this is a situation that I will put it as a speculation, and we are extremely conservative. The price is over dollar right now, but using that just kind of cash flow method and, and throwing out some of the biggest numbers and, and not ignoring them, the grade is so high on the situation that you, you, we're projecting about a twelve dollar stock on this thing, and that's in today's hmm. market. I, you know, this is something that gets me excited, and I'm, I'm never giving up, Michael. I just will not give up. And these things come across rarely. I would have to state for the record, this is probably the best grade as far as intercept size and grade itself. So combining the two uh, that I've seen, I think, ever. And I've been looking at this stuff for like four decades. It's interesting you're saying about the palladium and platinum both because, of course, uh, you know, used in, you know, you see the car market manufacturing side of things sort of pick up and, you know, the demand then for palladium is, is picking up with that. And as you say, again, the stocks haven't reflected it, but certainly the metal prices have. Exactly, and this is where you want to take opportunity. Because opportunity comes, you want to, which, which means you've got to get your emotions pushed to the side. And, you know, I'm pretty good at it, but I'm human too. I'm excited about this one company, and there's others I'm excited about. But because we can think logically, you have to look at what the business is. And this business grade is king. I am not a fond proponent of, you know, we've got a gram per ton of gold, and we've got a bazillion acres of it, and, you know, we can all make money. There are some mines that do that, but I'd rather have 100 grams per ton. I mean, I want yeah, I'm to with you. do the math on this thing. You're looking at so, uh, one intercept is over 100 meters of four ounces the ton. Do the math on that. You're looking at Let me hold you at that, David. We've got to hold you at that because we're across the country here. We're talking with David Morgan. We'll be back with him in just a couple of minutes' time. Right now, I've got David Morgan on the line with me. You can find David at www.silver-investor.com, www.silver-investor.com. David, just a couple of quick questions for you here. Let me start with this. You're looking at uh, this kind of a correction that we've been seeing. My my indicate or my tendency then is to say it's kind of like a Boxing Day sale. If they want to put real good quality on sale, I'm willing to buy. Is that the approach you kind of take when looking at the stocks themselves in the, in the midst of a correction? Not necessarily the, the timing of it, just the sort of put on the radar screen approach. You know, every time that we get sentiment this low, uh, it's, it's near the bottom or bottom. And I'm not, which means that we're there. I mean, are we there today, tomorrow? Is this the exact day? Probably not. But it does mean that we're very close. And just again, keep composed. And I did a show recently. I said, take a deep breath and do a thought experiment and ask yourself, pretend you had no mining shares, pretend you had no gold and silver. And ask yourself, if you had the facts in front of you, what's going on with the global economic system, with those facts, what would you buy? And I think Mm -hmm. the answer for most of us would be we'd be in the, you know, in the mining sector, or at least in the precious metals at some level. And I wouldn't change that. And if you do that thought experiment personally and come to the same conclusion, then just relax. As far as what I'm, you know, kind of pushing hard on this one company that I like so well, there is opportunity here at the bottom to just get rid of some companies that maybe just are not don't have a chance of coming to life because they're out of money and that type of thing. And what I like to do, and, I, you know, I'm not perfect. I've made some errors, is off those now you know they're probably not coming back they can't raise the money here they're probably not going to be able to and replace them you know so in other words get rid of my weaker speculations for stronger ones that's what i like to do Mm -hmm. well and and again it's so much obviously this is is not a particularly insightful comment but so much of uh, the mistakes we make are about our approach to it and the successes we have is about learning from those mistakes and the approach is what you're uh, alluding to at, at this point so let me finish with that David uh, looking at this kind of a marketplace I think you've given us the hint of what your answer is but what do you think the biggest mistake investors are going to make well one is to not trust the long term pitcher two to try to trade too often I do trade I'm a position trader I might do four to six in a year uh, I don't guarantee how many, but it's only with partial profits. I never change my core position. I keep adding to it all the way up and down. And look at the long picture. I mean, I saw Tim Wood speak here at Spokane, great speech, very conservative type. And he says the bull market's over in gold from history when you have two 40% gains back-to-back. In other words, two years in a row. So if you take 1600 and take 40%, get that number, and then add 40% on top of that. When you see that two years in a row, then you're going to start thinking about, hey, this market might be getting overheated. Folks, we're far from a top. We're much closer to a bottom. 
suck it up. If you don't have any more money to invest, just hold what you have. For those of you that lost because you over leveraged, I feel I feel sorry for you, but you know it's a tough game. There's really no need for extra leverage in this market because the beta on these stocks is double the beta on a normal stock. I'm not trying to talk fancy for the financial types, you know what I'm saying, but the volatility is extreme in the mining share, so you don't need to, you know, margin those stocks or that type of thing. And of course I'm not gonna tell anyone what to do, but it's a tough game investing, but it's a fun one if you just use your head, keep your composure and Keep your eye on the ball. And here's the ball. The ball's low. Buy low, sell high. We're low. What should you do? Good stuff. David Morgan, my guest. You can find him at www.silver-investor.com. David, thanks for finding the time. My pleasure. Thank you, Michael. 